Hey everybody, it's Dave from Clean Pro Supply and Resin Force Products, and today we're going to talk about a couple different types of squeegees, when I recommend using different types of squeegees, and the results you're going to get from using them. So obviously there's lots of different types of squeegees on the market. I'm not going to necessarily talk about individual brands here. It's more so the style and when to use them and what's going to happen. Uh, starting off, we have a notch squeegee. This is a thicker rubber. Uh, it is flexible, of course, but it's a little bit thicker on the, on the, on the width side here. Um, and then this is a 1 8 inch notch and that 8 inch is how deep the notch is cut and how much it sticks out. The size of the notch is of course going to determine the thickness of the epoxy because when you pour your moisture vapor barrier on the ground or if you're using polyaspartic or polyurea or regular epoxy, whatever you're putting down and you're pulling with your squeegee like this, the, uh, the way your squeegee comes in contact with the surface is going to determine how much material is left on the surface. Uh, so a notch squeegee is essentially gauging out your material. So if I'm going to put this uh, moisture vapor barrier down directly to the concrete and I want to put it down at about 100 square feet per gallon, I'm going to choose this eighth inch notch squeegee because as I ribbon this out on the concrete and then I pull it with a squeegee, of course it's leaving little trails or little beads in between every tooth of the squeegee. And then you go to back roll it to even it out and that's going to give it about 100 square feet per gallon as a gauge. Um, the more you push down because of the flex, you can pull a little bit tighter if you want to go maybe 125 square feet per gallon. But if you just kind of lightly glide it across the surface, then this eighth inch notch will give you around 16 mils, which is around uh, 100 square feet per gallon. Uh, keep in mind that as you use this, the rubber serrated teeth will wear down a little bit. So over time, this may kind of function like more of a, a flat squeegee like this one here. And of course, the flatter it is with the less teeth, it's gonna pull that epoxy even tighter. You may only get 10 mils or even eight mils. So your notch squeegees, you're not gonna be able to use as long as you can use your flat squeegees. Uh, what my guys do is we use the notch squeegees, but once they start wearing down too much, then we just kind of abrade them down either with a knife or sandpaper. And then we just flip to using that in replacement of an actual flat squeegee. So we rarely buy the flat squeegees, my guys are usually using these and then just transitioning it when they want to use a flat one. Um, but this notch squeegee is going to be used primarily for base coats uh, or body coats in order to maintain a certain thickness of that epoxy or polyurea or polyspartic, whatever you're putting down. Next we have the thick flat squeegee and you'll notice that this is similar to the notch squeegee like this, but it's just not notched. It's just flat. So it is still just as thick. It is flexible. The purpose of this is for doing grout coats across maybe flake or quartz. Um, this is going to pull it really tight over a textured surface. Me tight meaning you don't want to have any material covering your peaks, but it is going to grout coat and fill in all your valleys. So theoretically what you're going to do is pour your polyaspartic over your um, flake or your quartz, grout coat it with a thick, stiff, flat squeegee, and then back roll it and then that will kind of pull it back out of the valleys a little bit coat your, your peaks and now we have a nice ripple effect so it's not completely fully textured but it's not completely smooth either and these are this is a great squeegee for top coats or flake floor systems or a full broadcast quartz system however if you're doing something directly to concrete or another flat epoxy um, that's usually when contractors are flipping over to the magic trowel this is also flat the more you press down, of course, the tighter you can pull the material. But the nice thing about this is it's much more flexible because it's much thinner. So you can do a lot of different things with different techniques. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're doing a metallic epoxy floor, you can use this to kind of feather it. You can, you can kind of trail like this. You can zigzag. Um, you can just pull straight. You can tilt it up and you can push. There's lots of different techniques you can do with the magic trowel that's, I guess, maybe a little bit more artistic uh, and a little bit more custom based on your technique. Whereas these blades here are kind of more of like, you know, think of it like a universal plow. Um, you're gonna use it for your general purpose, top coat, grout coat kind of thing. They're both flat. They're both gonna um, pull tight the harder you push down. But the nice thing about this is you can feather a little bit thicker. So maybe you have a flake floor that the customer says they want a little bit more of a smooth surface, meaning you're gonna use more top coat. Well, if you pull it tight with this one, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a ripple effect after you back roll it. Whereas if you pull tight with this one, like this, just because it's much more flexible, it's gonna leave more material on the floor, especially because of the viscosity of the material. Um, if you have a, a thicker viscosity, polyaspartic or epoxy or whatever you're putting down, um, this is gonna leave more on the floor because it's just not gonna pull it as tight. 
If you're putting more down pressure on this, just because it's stiffer and thicker, it's gonna pull it much tighter, whereas this is gonna leave more product on the floor. So that way you get a smoother finish, you know, if you're doing like just a flat flake system versus if you're doing flake with a little bit more of a ripple texture effect. So lots of different techniques you can do when you're using different squeegees. Uh, you can go wider, you can go uh, thinner. Um, there's notches that are even bigger than this. Maybe if you're doing urethane cement, I suppose you could use a notch, but usually you're gonna use a gauge rake for that. But for most epoxy products that we sell and we use and our contractors are buying from us, um, you're gonna be using these three squeegees with these two being our most common for flake and quartz systems. And then these two being most common for metallic epoxy systems, because this is gonna get your coat spread for your base coats um, to maintain your thickness. And then if you're doing like a wet on wet for metallic, you may wanna do like a full wet prime using this and then pour your beans or ribbons um, and then use this or a roller to manipulate it. So hopefully that answers any questions you guys have about different types of squeegees, the small notch, um, the thick flat or the magic trial flat. And, uh, but if there's any further questions you guys have that I have not answered in this video, feel free to comment below. We're happy to answer and we're here for you anytime. Take care.